You don't know what you're doing. Probably not. We came here so nothing like this would happen. Nothing like what? You people, coming here with cards and taking it away. The government. We're not the government. No difference. What are you going to do now? Go back home. Back to the States. Our parents are worried sick. I guess it would have never worked. You? Oh, I'm leaving too. You're good people. Make your parents proud. This thing's full of liquid. Listen. Right. You'd better go untie your friend. Hey! Where are you going? To make some hell. Plane's late. Sometimes wish we could use the TARDIS if the cat hadn't screwed things up. Flight 705 to UK now boarding. Ah, excellent. Uh, excuse me, miss. Problem? I'm sorry, but there seems to have been a mistake on your ticket. Mistake? I'll give you a mistake. <laughs> I'm afraid you have to fly first class. Here you are, miss. Yeah, thanks. If there's anything you require. No, I'm fine. They serve free champagne up here. You can have mine as well if you like. Thanks for the ticket. I assume you were behind that? Well, I just asked the airline computer nicely and it upgraded your reservation. Didn't expect you to meet me. I thought I'd come to see how you are. Knackered. I can imagine. You've done very well. While I was talking to their computer, I, I checked the cargo manifest. The item you obtained for us is secure in the hold. Secure from being damaged, or doing damage? Drink your champagne and get some sleep. We'll be back in London soon enough. Hmm. Out of water. Nearly three. Going to rain, and again at seven. Right on schedule. Still contaminated. Won't live long in this world with its contaminants. Oh, Alec, how innocent you were. Your clean flesh. No tattoos. The way you burnt. I'll never love again. Right on schedule. And they'll be back soon. You sure you're one out here? Yes, this will do. Ace, come on. Why are we at a broken down McDonald's? Come on, careful of the glass. Which kid graffiti? Really sad in here. Would you like fries with that? What does this place remind you of, Ace? McDonald's. Really? Well, it reminds me of a deconsecrated church. Perhaps one that has been put to a new purpose. The scorched kitchen is the altar. The hex signs are the new decorations. Spray paint instead of stained glass. Some of it's not spray paint. These are the benches for the congregation. And the free area in the middle would be... The dance floor. Why not? Because you don't have dance floors in churches. Depends on your religion. What do you know about witches, Ace? Witch kids, you mean? Or real witches? What's a real witch? I just meant proper witches instead of the kids. You know, the goths, the witch kids, the crows. And what do you know about the crows? They did this place over. Some people got killed. Hmm. It's getting dark. I'm not afraid of them. Let's go, shall we? Yeah. Tell me what else you know about the crows. You know what they've done, and you know you're not afraid of them, but what else? At school, when I was a kid, we were all wearing chippies and shaving brand names into our hair. Some of the kids even had them tattooed. The crows like their tattoos, though. This is different, isn't it? Yes. Ah, berries. Are those berries poisonous? They are now. I miss them, the crows. I mean, I wasn't around when they started. When I first saw them, I thought they were the goths. They were too political. And then I thought they were the hippies. But then they were too violent. Almost there. Almost where? 
here. Wicked ride? An Austin 35? Brand new. You drive. I feel it. It's in this house. The house on Allen Road. Or is it Alien Road? The sign says both. Coming through the floor. A vibration. A doorway to another world. They come. You forgot to cancel the mirror. And you're not listening. How the hell did that get here? The white van you saw. Yeah, I worked that out. But how did you get it through customs so quickly? Diplomatic seals are handy things. What is this thing? Have you ever heard of cryogenics? Like when somebody gets sick, they put them into a deep freeze. Yes. And they hope one day, in the future, someone's going to thaw them out and be able to cure the disease. Like Walt Disney. Except with cryogenics, you need a lot of technology and a lot of money. This is the poor man's version. Instead of low temperatures, it involves chemicals in a gel which suspend the life processes. You take a durable container, fill it with the chemicals, put the person inside it, and seal it carefully. The search for eternal life has been a recurrent motif in your cultures. It's a form of insanity, and this is one of its more benign manifestations. All you need is a plastic barrel and some storage space, and you've achieved immortality. Of a sort. These are very popular in California. I'll bet. Look inside. Eyes! They're human eyes! Oh, more than that. It's a whole human. Ah, Vincent. Do you have Talon's number one in yet? It's with the other comics as usual, Vincent. You should know that by now. And don't run. I swear, that boy is going to... Oh, not them again. Your physician's bag? Why would we need that? And who's the kid in the gel? Ace, meet Vincent. And by the way, I'd put on a swimsuit if I were you. Swimsuit? Or go naked, I don't care which. You don't want to get that gel all over your clothes. Why would I get gel on my clothes? It'll be almost inevitable when you help him upstairs. Oh, good. And into the bar. Bar? Hot, uh, but not too hot. All right, Prescott, get out of my shop. Take a fucking break, you. We have business. Yeah, business. You there, kid. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, who are you? Come on, you've seen the posters. They're because of the things I do with kids. Not all kids, just little shits like you. The ones who ride around on bicycles buying digital comics, not actually reading. Look, I don't- Shut up! No one's coming to help you. Let's get started. Oh, Doctor, he's heavier than he looks. Don't let him move around before he eats something and get a shower. The gel is a topical anesthetic. Thanks for the help, Doctor. All right, Vincent, in you get. Oh, but not too hot. Calvin, you wrecked his bike yet? Uh, the little shit isn't getting away on our watch. Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, Chris. What's that? It's his bike! Vincent! Vincent, are you okay? They didn't hurt you too much. No, I'm, I'm fine. You can't stay here, ma'am. I don't know what we can do. I have someone on it. Butler may be interested in this. He's a candidate for the program. Drowning. Oh. Drowning. Oh, yes, I forgot. Be careful he doesn't drown. No shit, Professor. Is everything all right? He's definitely recovering. 
He's gone back to sleep. Yes, he'll have intermittent flashes of wakefulness followed by periods of sleep until he recovers fully from the effects of the gel. Which is when? Oh, a day or so. Plenty of time before we leave. Leave? Good idea, emptying the bathwater. We'll just need him to lie there until he dries off. Leave for where? New York. Fair enough. Who is that kid anyway? Oh, just sit down and I'll tell you all about him. Good. But first, I'd best tell you about this. What is this? A magazine? Turn to page 27. It's this house. Someone's been taking pictures from the hillside. That was me. I wrote the article as well. A doorway to other worlds. That publication is what you might call a, a fanzine. It is sold to a certain small, specific audience. Young people who are adopting new belief systems. A blend of ecological activism with older ways of thinking. What you're talking about is black magic. Mm, sorcery, to be more precise. In any case, this article was calculated to attract attention to this house, on Allen Road, as the signs now say. Provide them with just enough information to find it. We have a battle to fight Ace. The boy in the bathtub is part of it. The other person is also vital to my plan. I put information into that magazine that would act as a, a lure to someone with a certain profile of beliefs and obsessions. Exactly the kind of person who would be most useful to us. Think of it as a, a kind of job advertisement, if you will. I don't suppose you want to tell me a little more about the applicant? Well, they are likely to be violently opposed to the destruction of this planet. They'll be full of anger and aggression, coupled with the belief of supernatural forces. Of course, the person is likely to be unstable, potentially very dangerous. Okay. When is he turning up? She is already here. Here in the sense of here in the general neighbourhood? Here in the sense of upstairs. Oh, oh, God, what are you doing in there? Kid? Can't you speak? Your name is Justine. How could you know that? You and Cheryl were walking. You were laughing. It's her birthday. Cheryl is happy. She runs across. And who are you? How did you know my name? Cheryl runs across the street. And then the bad thing happens. Jesus Christ! What was that? Ah, they've made first contact. Excellent. Hey, make sure he's alright. He's breathing too fast. Don't panic. At least he's breathing. Help me get him into the bedroom. Alright, lay him down here. Just relax, would you? Everything will be fine. It seems I'm the calm one. Hard to believe that he has so much power. The car you were restoring it will need more work than ever now. Professor? Ah, my stethoscope. I've been looking for that. What is it anyway, this power? It seems to be an old hybrid form of psi talent. Telepathy combined with some kind of telekinesis. <sighs> Justine. Vincent has the power to make things happen with his mind. I noticed. But he's only a kind of conduit. He channels power from elsewhere. It is the emotions and memories of others which provide the raw energy. Like Justine here, for instance. You might say Vincent's power is a kind of midwife's power. Give him another three hours sleep, then wake him up. We'll all have supper together. Breakfast. Ah, yes. <laughs> Nearly morning. He's an ugly little creep, isn't he? Look within. Look what? Deeper than the skin. That's what love is, after all. I don't think we're talking about love here. It's the same thing. It isn't the outer surface that matters. It loves me. The entity within. Entity? The demon that dwells inside this boy. He's not a demon, he's a kid. An American. His name is Vincent, for Christ's sake. He's a creature of power. A demon. Crap. Crap and superstition. You heard what the doctor said. He said that for your benefit. Didn't you see the way he looked at me when he said it? Didn't you see him smile at me? He was talking about midwives, the wise women. They used the sacred herbs and potions. They wielded power. He was talking about witchcraft. Maybe, but he was just conning you. He was conning someone. He's using the things you believe in. Demons, witches, all that black magic crap. He knows this crap, but he's using it to manipulate you. Demons, witches, black magic crap. Well, it certainly is one way of describing reality. Well... Just words to cover the truth. You're saying he chose those words because he knows they're a necessary illusion for me. That's right. That's the way a sorcerer behaves. I thought we were beginning to make some progress here. 
There aren't any sorcerers, there aren't any demons. I'm sorry that it hurts. I'm sorry if it scares you, but you have to wrap up your tiny brain around the concept. He is a sorcerer. He makes realities to accommodate belief systems. He knows you can't stand the truth. That's why he had to invent that story about Vincent's powers. All those words like telepathy and telekinesis. Do they explain anything? Those powers are clearly a black blessing. They're conferred by the Lords of Hell for use on this plane of reality. Plane of reality? Right. I just feel sorry for you. <laughs> Don't try and make me angry. Seems pretty easy to do. I suppose you believe in elves and unicorns too. Of course not. You dancing in the moonlight naked, don't you? Where'd you go? Down to the Deptford every midsummer? Up on the Isle of Dogs? Have you been there? No. And I haven't been to the masses in the Blackheath either. I just read about it in the mirror. There are just a bunch of kids with nothing better to believe in. You'll sit around listening to Kate Bush in the forest and Othin to your Earth Mother. I feel sorry for you. You're right. It is quite easy to make me angry. You didn't have to do this to me, did you? Look, alright, I'm sorry. A person's belief system is their world, and it can be a delicate thing. I know. It can be devastating to have your view of reality challenged. I know, alright? I'm sorry. And now you've made me angry. So that's what I'm going to do to you. The Doctor. Your friend. He has powers. He has power, and you know it. How does he account for that power? What did he tell you he was? Let's talk about it in the morning. You have your necessary illusions as well. But in your case, they involve science. You don't believe in magic, but you believe in machines. So when he explains himself to you, he uses your terms of reference. That's the way a sorcerer behaves. Why don't you just try and get some sleep? It's been a long night. Let me tell you something about yourself. When you were a kid, your favourite reading was science fiction. Maybe books. Maybe comics. Spaceships, time travel, that sort of thing. You work from a paradigm of technology, so when he encounters you, he offers a description of reality which works with your terms of reference. Let me guess, he said he was some kind of eccentric scientist. A mad inventor? Look, we don't- Did he say he was an android? A wise and powerful robot? An alien? <laughs> Just stop, please. He's from another planet. That's what you believe. Shut up! You don't believe in magic, but you believe he's from another planet. And you're his girl companion. And that thing in the cellar? The door? The gateway to other worlds? How does he account for that? A spaceship? A time machine? Shut up! You insulted me and you thought you could get away unscathed. As punishment, I have peeled back your view of reality. It was easy. Now leave before I tear your world apart completely. Justine. God. No appetites? No thanks. I'll have some more, sir. Now, the candles. Make a wish. I've never been to New York before. How about you? Never been out of England, really. Well, across the channel a few times, to Paris and Amsterdam but never out of Europe before. That used to be something called the Inn on the Green. And here's Central Park. I like your dreadlocks. <laughs> hey, uh, won't the others be getting worried about us? The Doctor and... What's her name? Art... Queen... <laughs> Ace. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, they said for us to meet them somewhere on Fifth Avenue, didn't they? Number one, Fifth Avenue. Don't worry. We've got plenty of time. Besides, I just had to see some trees. I guess it's okay. Maybe we should go back to the market. I don't think we have time for that. You're worried. Those boys over there, they're odd. We could run. Oh, I'm not running. I'm your bodyguard. The doctor said to look after you. We can look after each other. Here, take my hand. Vincent? Yeah? Run. <sighs> what was that? Just the Butler Institute. They sweep the park every couple of hours. They pick up homeless people for biostock and... You know, the last time a girl kissed me, something bad happened. I guess... My love... Just hate. Alright, Butler. Come and get him.
Everything is going according to plan. But what is this plan? Why don't you tell me? Tell me how much you've worked out and I'll fill in the blanks. Okay. You need a weapon. Those two kids are the weapon. I don't know what the target is, but I can guess. That girl's got a thing about cars, pollution, the environment. She's a bit psychotic. Perhaps, but she also needs to be right. This planet is reaching the point of no return. Ordinary people don't have the ability to alter the course of events. Only the big corporations and the very rich have the power to do that. Yeah, but eventually they'll do something. They have to breathe the same air we do. Well, not necessarily. But I'm right otherwise, right? Yes. So tell me why we're standing in the middle of New York City in a chemist. A drugstore. Try to speak the language and adopt the local ways. Are we supposed to meet somebody here? Besides Vincent and Justine, I mean. Yes. Vincent isn't coming back. Justine is arranging for him to go directly to the Butler Institute. They're the target. Yes. One of their research projects. We have to put a stop to it. Just tell me what I have to do. Well, please don't be startled if you hear alarms go off. Or gunfire. Do you mean there's going to be a robbery in here? It's already started. And that's part of the plan too? Not exactly. But the security guards will send a signal which summons the police. And, thanks to the modifications I made to their computer, we can be sure that a certain specific police officer will get the call. And she will come here. And she's part of the plan? No, but her partner is. And who He'll be with her. No, he's dead as a matter of fact. Am I on time? Yes, as I was just saying to Ace, everything is going according to plan. There go the two security guards to sound the alarm. Did you manage Vincent all right? I did what you wished, but now... Hmm? Forgive me, my lord. Cyanide! No! I don't feel a pulse. Is she dead? Yes. Is this part of the plan? 